Stock prices are up and so are valuations. For many private equity firms, that means one thing, get out while you can. Whether you're Blackstone, Apex, or Goldman Sachs, the exit strategy is back. What if you're Thomas H. Lee Partners, though? Well, we're about to find out. Scott Sperling is co-president of Thomas H. Lee, a Boston-based firm that has raised about $22 billion of equity and invested in more than 100 businesses. He joins us this morning from Boston. Scott, very good of you to be here with us. Um, let Thank me ask you, you this question to start off with. Are you surprised to hear so many people in your industry, private equity, talking about taking their portfolio companies public now? Well, I think there's been a lot of work done on these portfolio companies to make them better businesses and position them to be better public um, candidates uh, than perhaps at the point that we acquired them. The public markets, the public uh, equity market, and certainly the high-yield market have been very robust over the course of the last four to six months. And I think uh, the uh, investors in those markets are looking for places to take reasonable risks. And buying a company that has undergone a pretty extensive process of overhaul uh, to make them um, better uh, situations to invest in is something that uh, would be natural for uh, buyers of public equities to take a look at. Scott, I'm going to ask you to speak on behalf of your industry, but what about the people who say every time private equity wants to get out, it's the last time that we should be buying? You guys are effectively calling the top evaluations and the top of the market in some respects. Well, I, I only wish we were that smart, but I quite honestly don't think that that's the case. Um, the other thing to take a look at is the very fact that you're taking a company public doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting out. And in fact, in, of most of the companies that we take public, we're not selling uh, our own securities, but the company is raising capital for investment purposes, for deleveraging purposes, and to give us a currency in order to do um, acquisitions. So um, you should look not just whether or not the company is going public as the standard for whether private equity is getting out, but you need to go down one layer and understand whether or not the private equity player is selling a significant or all of its own ownership in the company. Scott, and in the cases that we're looking at, uh, we're not doing that. Scott, can you quantify at all the gap between where securities are being priced right now and actual true valuation? Well, yeah, I think that's a very interesting and important question because what we've seen is the public equity markets are discounting a future where the fundamentals match the pricing that we're seeing today in, in those securities. And I would say we're cautiously optimistic. We have seen uh, the so-called bounce off the bottom almost across our portfolio company's performance. Uh, we are seeing a number of areas where um, you're starting to see sequential growth. It's not just that you're seeing a decline in the, uh, uh, the rate of, uh, of uh, performance in uh, uh, the various markets that our companies participate in, but we're seeing actual growth come back, and that's a good thing. I think the public equity markets, if you look at the multiples that uh, it's currently trading at, would suggest that that is going to continue and that we won't have uh, uh, any problematic situations going forward in the overall economy. And I think that's probably as good a forecast as any out there, but in fact it is uh, somewhat ahead of the fundamentals that we're seeing in place today. Scott, I want to ask you uh, about some comments that we heard earlier, uh, rather last week, from Steve Schwartzman and Guy Hans, two other big figures in your industry. They were speaking yep. in the Middle East saying that limited part, effectively a warning to limited partners, you're going to have to get used to lower returns, and those returns are going to be harder to get. Would you agree with that looking forward? Well, I, I, again, I, I just think that we're all really bad uh, you know, predictors of the future. <laughs> I would say that um, we just don't know. If we knew, everyone would have a perfect record. And what we're seeing today is lower amounts of leverage. But we've lived in leverage environments that are very similar to this for much of the last 30 years in the leverage buyout business. I would rather buy a company with four or five times leverage and pay a lower price then uh, do some of the things that happened in the, particularly the 07 period, where the industry paid relatively high prices, but used a lot of cheap leverage to uh, make the numbers work. And so as we look forward, where we see a world where we're coming out of the no-risk environment, where banks would only lend two to three times cash flow uh, in order to uh, uh, help a, uh, a buyout occur, we're now moving back to the four to five times level and quite frankly, four to five times is a very comfortable level of, uh, of debt for uh, uh, situations if you buy it at the right price. And uh, that should generate 
you know, reasonably good returns. How those returns compare to what we've seen over the last 20 years, again, I'm, I'll leave it to, uh, to uh, some other folks to uh, predict. Scott, we'd like to thank you very much. That is Scott Sperling, co-president of Thomas H. Lee Partners. He was with us from Boston this morning.